Hello there, people of Margate. Hello, Cokesbury family and neighbors. Hello to you who is watching this video now. In this part three of the sermon, God's Love Language, I am sharing why King David offered kindness to Mephibosheth, the son of his best friend, Jonathan. Was it because David was merciful and benevolent? Was it because David had a good heart? Or do you think it was because David was perfect? If I were you, I would watch the full video to understand what motivated David and how that relates to our story, to our life now. And if you miss me saying why I believe God's love language is covenant and why this story is so important to my faith, you might want to check the video God's love language part one and part two. I am calling this project Monday Chapel. Every week I will be posting the sermon I preached on Sunday to make it easier for you to watch it, hit the like button and to share it uh, with your, the, those you love. And I appreciate you helping us in the process. I pray that God will bless you, and I can't wait to see you in our church here on Sunday at 10.30 a.m. So now let's watch the sermon. So when Mephibosheth heard that David was looking for him, most likely he was desperate. And that's why when he was before David, what he did? Do you remember? He bowed. He bowed. So in the RSV translation, we read, Mephibosheth fell on his face and did obeisance. And the word translation at fell here comes from the Hebrew nafal, which means to collapse, to be inferior to. So when Mephibosheth came, he was so scared that he collapsed on his face, humiliating himself before King David. He was not bowing down in respect or reverence. He was humiliating himself to avoid the capital punishment because he was the grandson of the former king. And to that, David responds, hey, don't be afraid, for I will surely show you kindness. I will surely show you kindness because my eyes are blue? No. For the sake of your father, Jonathan, I will restore to you all the lands that belonged to your grandfather Saul, and I will always, you will always eat at my table. And I love this phrase because in my mind it rings, Jesus saying, I will always be with you. You will always eat at my table. I will always be with you. That's God. That's his nature. I will surely show you kindness. Instead of punishment, God, David offers grace, just like God does. So the question is, why did David show kindness? When you read the whole passage, David repeats that expression three times. And again, let's go to the Hebrew. The Hebrew word translated as kindness is hesed. And it means loyalty, joint obligation, faithfulness. So in this passage, David is offering kindness to Mephibosheth out of a joint obligation between friends. That's the reason why David offered kindness. We read in 1 Samuel chapter 20, Jonathan saying this to David, making an oath, making a covenant. Look how clear this is. May the Lord be with you as he has been with my father. But show me unfailing kindness, like the Lord's kindness as long as I live. Do not ever cut off your kindness from my family. Not even when the Lord has cut off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth. Jonathan and David made a deal. They made a covenant. They had a joint obligation with each other. 
And that's the reason why David did what he did to Mephibosheth. So let's recap. First, God reveals his love and grace by having David looking for Mephibosheth, trying to find him. Then God he reveals God's plan of salvation and restoration when David forgives Mephibosheth. And now God is revealing his faithfulness to his covenant, to his plan, to his own nature when David took the joint obligation seriously. And that's why I'm so sure that God loves you unconditionally. There's nothing you can do to make God hate you. God will always be trying to find you. To be with you. To change you. To pour out his grace in you. Covenant is God's love language. God made a covenant. You can just read the Bible. God made a covenant with Adam, with Noah, with Abraham, with Moses, with David. Through Jesus, God made a covenant with us. We belong to God. There's no, there's no other way to put it. We belong to God. Cokesbury United Methodist Church belongs to God. And please don't let anyone else say otherwise. Don't let them say. Don't let people believe that. It makes no sense. It makes zero sense. Because when we bind that idea, you know what we're doing? We are ignoring what Jesus did for us. And that's just sad. When people try to tell you what you are before God, they are just ignoring what Jesus did to you, for you, in you. Don't let people do that. No. You have a relationship with God. You belong to God. Period. And just let's praise the Lord because of that. That's it. We belong to God. Because he called us. Because he found us. God the Father has a joint obligation with God the Son to save humankind. And we have a joint obligation with Jesus to spread his love and grace. We vow that when we are baptized. Do you remember that? Last week, you remembered your baptism here. I saw it. I was online. And I don't know if you remember, but when we do our vows, we, we commit ourselves to be what? A community of love and forgiveness. Do we commit to be a, a, a community of dispute and hate? No. We, com we commit ourselves before God to be a community of love and forgiveness. That's the call. That's our joint obligation. That's why we are brothers and sisters. So hear me this. I want to make a covenant with you here and now. And this is the covenant I will make with you. Cokesbury United Methodist Church. I said it, but now I'm saying it again. I'm here to be your pastor. I'm here to walk with you. I'm here to reveal God's grace and love to you and to others around us. I'm here to do missions for the glory of God with you. And that's my commitment to you. I need your prayers. I need your actions. We need your resources. Sorry, don't like to say that. But we do. We need to pay the bills. All right? We are here to be what? God's church. And as long as you want to walk with me in that journey, we'll be fine. 
will be fruitful. We will have an impact in Margate again. And that's my dream. I hope it is yours. I hope you take on on this challenge. I hope you accept this calling to this covenant. And I hope you do your part, and I'll do my best to do mine. Amen. Amen. If we work together in this covenant, we'll have those kids here. We'll have those teens here. We'll be a blessing to them. We'll be able to be a support to them. Amen? Okay, we got it. I'm happy, Cokesbury. We got this. We got this. God is in this process. That's why it's so beautiful to serve the God we serve. That's why I was talking about prevenient grace. You know why? One, we already know we have the victory. Jesus won. Period. Second, we know that God is ahead of us, preparing the way. So we are good. Don't you think? We're good. Let's get together and just follow God's voice. We'll be good. Okay? I usually don't preach that long. <laughs> it's my first Sunday. Give me a break. Okay? I want to offer this to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May God bless your heart. May God bless your family. May God bless this church.